Welcome to Inside Rebel Football 2018. I'm Jim Norris, your host, and glad to be back this year. And I'm joined by a man uh, who's been a part of two national championships, uh, I think eight state championships, seven runner-ups, and uh, countless district titles, and uh, he wants more. And that guy is none other than head coach uh, <laughs> Jerry Arledge. And, Coach, welcome back to Inside Rebel Football, and welcome uh, to a new season. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, let me say that it's a pleasure to have you back in that chair over there. <laughs> well, thank we you, missed Coach. you. We missed you immensely. Well, Coach, and glad I, to have you back. I appreciate that. It's good to thank be you. back. And I want to thank uh, Rick Gio, who filled in for me uh, last year. May do some this year if I have a conflict, but uh, it's good to be back. Thank you. Thank you for being here. What's, uh, what's 2018 uh, have in store? What does it have in store for the Rebels this year, Coach? You know, Jim, we uh, – and I, I tell people this all the time. I'm an optimist. I'm always, I'm always thinking we're going to win the state championship. Half that's, full. The glass is half full. That's, that's, uh, that's my goal. That's the coaching staff. That's our, that's our team. That's our community. I mean, that's what we expect. And we work awful hard to, to try to achieve that end. Well, and the reason for that is you guys have created a standard here that is just incredibly high that uh, – Almost anything less than a state championship appearance, a lot of folks uh, see that as disappointing, and, and you know it's just not fair. Well, all I can tell you is uh, is we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best coaching job that we can do. I think our kids uh, are going to play as hard as they can play. We're going to try to prepare them every week the best that we can compare them. If it's not good enough, then. Uh, uh, I guess it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, uh, it's not time to, to go, but uh, what motivates you after all this success that you've had as a coach? And I'm just talking about your tenure at West Monroe. I, I haven't even tried to go anywhere else, but what continues to motivate you here in, in coaching these young men? Well, Jim, I think, <clears throat> I think this is my 27th year at West Monroe. And, uh, you know, once, once our family moved here, this became home. Uh, we've been here longer than we've ever been anywhere else, and it's it is a great community. We've uh, we've made a lot of great friends, and uh, you know we it didn't take long. We've grown to love West Monroe High School and West Monroe the community, and uh, it's still fun. It never ceases to be fun coaching. Well, for you know me anyway. Well, it, maybe it, for some, and, and I can see that when you know when I interview you, maybe not at, at when Stanley does sometimes at halftime, but <laughs> you know before games uh, on the on the TV show, the radio, you know there's there's almost this sparkle in your eye. You just seem to to love particularly this time of the year, but just coaching kids. Well, I do, and I think most of I think our coaches do too, and uh, you know that's what makes it so much fun. We get in there and. Uh, uh, we come up with a plan. We work hard on it, and uh, uh, we've got we've got good good people in in a lot of key positions, and it takes a lot of us. Uh, we've got coaches that coach every position, and those guys are knowledgeable. And uh, to me, they do a great job of coaching. Yeah, but I know they do uh, coaching. Um, what was it like for you? Did you did you wake up uh, in fall camp and look out there for for number five at, at linebacker? Didn't see him and. Try to figure out what you were going to do without J.B. Gallet after four years? Well, he was certainly an outstanding player. And, uh, you know, but that's, that's the history of football. Uh, that's, that's the status quo. I mean, you're going to always have to replace people at, at uh, all levels of the game. They move on. They grow up. They retire, whatever it may be. <laughs> and it certainly uh, you miss a guy like J.B. And uh, we're fortunate uh, the cupboard's not bare. Someone <laughs> Boy, usually steps either. in. And I use the example of, I think it was either five or six years ago, where we lost six starters in one season, and somebody else stepped in. And if I remember correctly, we still did pretty well that year. I think we made it to the semis, got beat in the semis. So, to me, that's a great example. Uh, you know, you, you lose six good football players in a season to season-ending injuries, and someone else steps up. Hey, does, does what else? Getting, what else can you yeah, ask for? You can't. You can't ask for anything. You can't ask for anything right. uh, better but, than but that. But that's the reason that we work, and, and, and we tell kids this all the time. You may be a backup, but you're one snap, you're one play away from becoming a starter. You've got to be prepared when it's your time. And we work hard. We work two teams hard, two groups on both sides of the ball. And occasionally, 
it may be a third guy at, 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 a, at a position. But uh, maybe that's the reason that when someone does go down, we're able to uh, not miss them greatly because someone else steps in and fills that well, spot. It's got to be the reason. It's got to be the reason. Yeah. Uh, well, what, do you, what do you enjoy the most about coaching football? Friday nights. I was thinking that. Friday nights. But I love, I love the, uh, uh, the breakdown of the, of the opponent, uh, watching the films, and then, we, and then we analyze it and then try to come up with a plan. And hope they don't change a whole lot, you know. <laughs> and most good football teams don't. Because that's what makes them good. That's what makes them good. They believe in what they're doing, and, and they're going to do it. you got to stop it. And uh, very seldom does anyone change. But then on, on Friday night, that's when you get to see if all that preparation and all that hard work uh, comes to fruition. That's right. And that's the reason playing good people, just like Neville in the Jamboree and, and John Red in the first ball game and, McGill Doolin in the second ball game. I mean, you'll find out about yourself. What we, what, what do we have to fix? What do we have to change? Do we have to change personnel? Do we, what, what, what are we doing? We got to do a better job of coaching this. You know, all those things are exposed when you play good people. Well, you know, last year we, with that tough schedule, or maybe the year before, you said you were thinking about firing the AD. What about this year? Well, he probably needs to be fired. <laughs> who, who is the AD? <laughs> Well, I'm, I am in name. <laughs> I got you. In, in name. Well, speaking and I've got a lot of great help. <laughs> I know I've you got do. a lot of great help. I know you do. I just James play. Remedes, Miriam Counts, Shelby Ainsworth. So we're, we're all involved in, in the uh, athletic directorship. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I was just playing with yeah. you. Uh, we're talking about uh, that quality opponent uh, the other night, ULM, Bayou Jam. It, it lived up to its billing. It was the – the final game, it capped off uh, two days of, of high school football, and it was a great contest. It's, uh, it's really grown. Uh, you know, Patty Thurman uh, spends numerous, numerous hours putting this together and getting sponsors and, and lining everything up. She does a great job. And, and all the teams, there's 12 of us involved in this last jamboree, six games. And uh, it's, it's, such a, it's such a wonderful event. It's, it's very good for our entire community. It's a win-win situation for, for all the communities. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's great because, because this is a pretty good football, high school football <laughs> area. Boy, is it yes, ever. It is. Is it ever. And, uh, you know, the kids have to really enjoy uh, playing on a, a collegiate stage like that. Well, I think they do. And uh, especially guys that uh, maybe the first time they walked out there and, you look up in the ble in the stands and you see, I don't know how many was there for that game, but it was uh, it was quite a few Good folks. Five, quite a few folks, yes, it was. Well, what did you think about the Rebels' performance in the Bayou Gym? Well, there's always uh, always good and bad things. Uh, you know, we're we're much uh, more seasoned. We uh, return many more starters on defense than we do on offense. Uh, I thought defensively, we really really played well. A couple of guys have, have lost some weight which allows them to gain some quickness. And that's one of the things that we really have stressed is being in great condition, uh, be able to play that fourth quarter, play fast, play with quickness. Offensively, we realize that it takes time, and we've talked uh, about numerous times that you don't just throw an offensive line out there. It, <laughs> it takes time to rebuild it. And we replaced every offensive starter on the offensive line, plus – a pretty good football player at quarterback. Yeah, who yeah, was we, the Gatorade player of the state? You know, we talked about Gatorade yeah, we talked about missing JB Gallette, uh, but and I'll ask Glenn Hunt about it later on. What's it like looking out there and not oh, seeing yeah. Slade Bolden? You know, well, uh, you know, I think I think in time and in uh, there's no doubt in our mind that we're going to be a very good, very explosive off offensive football team. Well, uh, I know that we'll be, and uh, I. I think uh, this football team has the makings of a good one, Coach. I do, too. All right, we're going to we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in, in the closing seg segment later on in the show, but we'll take a break and look at uh, offense more closely in just a moment. Stay with us.
Sanson Family Medicine, 32 of the best, most dedicated medical professionals in the area. Assembled in a state-of-the-art medical clinic with in-house x-ray, lab, EKG, and more. We treat your whole family from geriatrics to pediatrics in their own building and women's health from a woman's perspective. We treat everything from sniffles to broken bones, from acute care to physicals and immunizations. Your complete clinic for the whole family, seven days a week. Sanson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. The Graduate Shop has been serving Northeast Louisiana schools for over 50 years. We provide the highest quality class rings, letter jackets, graduation announcements and accessories, as well as caps and gowns. The Graduate Shop enjoys celebrating special recognitions with our schools, especially when they win a state championship ring. We strive to provide the best service to our schools and families as they capture these special memories. The Graduate Shop, serving our community with quality graduation products. Kilpatrick's provides guidance to create meaningful ceremonies to honor the life of your loved one. You'll receive exactly what you selected. Others may offer you one thing and provide another. Your family's interest is our first priority. We offer individualized services to fit any need. Kilpatrick's provides service, facilities, and prices second to none. Kilpatrick Serenity Gardens offers many beautiful settings. Choose wisely. Choose Kilpatrick's. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football, and it's time to talk a little offense, and who better to do that with than the offensive coordinator in his 19th year at West Monroe? Yes, sir, 19th year. None other than Glenn Hunt. Glenn, welcome, 2018, and uh, welcome back to Inside uh, Rebel Football. Thank you, and uh, we're excited to be here, and we're excited about this season. Boy, I tell you what, exciting is the word, talking about uh, a Friday night. Yeah. That was a pretty good ball game Saturday night uh, over at the ULM. Tell us a little bit about the Jamboree. Uh, uh, we, we knew Neville defensively was better than they were last year, and we you know, have two returning starters, so we knew we were going to struggle some and, and uh, it got exposed uh, with their defensive line and their speed of their linebackers. Uh, but our kids played extremely hard. That was the one thing that we were pleased with was, was our effort. Uh, now, technically, we weren't very good, and that's something that we've gone to work, and our kids saw it on film, and uh, uh, they've dedicated themselves to be better this week. But I'm sure they will be. W was it uh... – Kind of an odd feeling uh, to to open up a game in 2018 and not see uh, Slade Bowden in any quarterback. I had texted him the <laughs> night before and told him said it's going to be weird walking out on the field without number 10 right there beside me, a guy that any time a game was on the line, you could put the ball in his hands and uh, uh, he could he was magical and uh, he's going to be missed. But we got some playmakers. Yeah, speaking of those playmakers at, at quarterback, got a couple of good ones there. Yes, we do. You know, we got uh, Garrett Common who's our starter, who's going to be a, uh, is going to have a great year. He's a, a well-respected by our football team. Uh, the kids love him. They know how hard he works, how much he uh, wants to win. He's a leader in the school, uh, just a great young man. And then we got Carson Jones. Uh, you know, he for the last three weeks, he's been working nothing but quarterback just so he can learn that in case something happens. And then we're also working uh, Caden Pierce and uh, Lane Little. And uh, those guys are getting better, too. Well, that's good. Uh you know, what a finish. Uh, you were kind of holding on a, a, at the end, but, uh, uh, you know, good things, uh, I, I think, abode for the Rebels in the future. Well, there's no doubt. You know, in the second half, our defense had control of the game, so we weren't going to throw it around, uh, risk our quarterback getting sacked, fumbling it, ball tipped, an interception. We were just going to run the football. Coach Arledge always says there's nothing wrong with a punt, and uh, we held him to his word in the second half. Well, and you play these guys again in week five. Right, right. And uh, and I'm sure they they didn't show everything. We didn't show everything. We just knew that going in, we wanted to run the football. We wanted to, these guys to grow up and uh, be able to play at game speed. And it's what's good going against Coach Arledge and Coach Osborne defense uh, during the week. We're not going to see a better defensive line and linebackers, a front seven. And uh, it's only going to make us better. And uh, I think you'll see a, a much improved offensive line this Friday night. Well, speaking of offensive line, uh, you got one guy next to you, and he pretty much, uh, uh, you know, fits the bill for the offensive yes. line all by himself. He is. That's Victor Cutler, number 68. He's our strong side tackle. He started a game or two his first, I mean, his sophomore year, uh, started a game or two last year, played a lot more last year as a role because uh, Hunter Robinson with his injuries, uh, you know, he started his career at center. And then we've moved him to tackle. He's done a great job. He's a great leader. You can see that he's worked out. He's dedicated himself to being a, the best football player he can. Uh, he's committed to play at ULM, and we just want him to be committed to play for the Rebels for 15 more weeks. Well, Victor uh, Victor Cutler, 
junior, right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, well, what was it like to play uh, at ULM, the school that you'll be playing for next year? It was an experience like no other. Like, it was giving me ready for that experience I know I'm going to have next year. Like, wasn't that nervous going into the game. I was just talking to the offensive line saying we can't be nervous. Like, we got to go out there, hit them in the mouth real good. Because I know it's a whole new offensive line, brand new starters, no, all the offensive linemen from last year graduated. So we had to come in and prove ourselves over again. Well, that's what you want. You want somebody right. like that to step up and help right. lead that offense. And, and he has. He's done a great job. Uh, and all our guys, they're, you know, they've played some and started some games. You know, Ethan Boyer, he started as a freshman a couple yeah. of games. Uh, you know, Daniel Hawthorne, uh, Blake Everett. And then we got two tight ends. They, they, they had never played a varsity game, and that's Rylan Green and uh, J.D. Davis. But the guy that's kind of – kind of grown the fastest and kind of impressed even Coach Arledge, and that's T.J. Bush. He played defensive tackle last year. He's never played a offensive line, and his growing curve has, has, has been high, and uh, he's got a huge ceiling. He can be as good as, as we've ever had, and uh, he's just it's been a process of learning how to play offense, but he's fallen in love with it. And this group, this one thing you know we talked about, we weren't very technically sound Saturday night. But they played their butts off. They really did. They played extremely hard uh, the entire game. And that's Effort what was I was there. proud of. Effort was there. Yes, sir. Well, Michael, we're not going to forget about you. Uh, Coach, introduce uh, this young man. Well, you can see what the team thinks about him. Michael Worley, he's wearing number five, which is a special number uh, for the Rebels. Uh, J.B. Gallant wore it uh, last year. But Michael, you know, he doesn't get the, the limelight, you know, the like Cam or um, Hamburg. But I'm going to tell you what, he's probably the MVP of our receivers because he can play any of those four positions and not miss a beat. Uh, he's, he's that uh, dedicated of student of the game. He's got some of the best hands on the team. And, you know, you saw it as a sophomore. He goes in in a state championship game and, and, and catches his only pass of the season in a varsity game, and it's a touchdown in the uh, Superdome. But the kid, he, he loves the game. You don't measure him by his height because you've you got to measure him by his heart. And uh, he, he, he's a good one. Well, show us those uh, hands. Michael, they tell me they're the best on the did. team. <laughs> what was it like to catch that pass in the dome? I mean, it was amazing, but uh, it was just in the moment, and I knew that's what we needed, uh, you know, somebody to fill in. So I was just doing my job. Well, you certainly did it, and you did it uh, well. You know, Coach uh, Hunt has talked about this re receiving core being one of the best from top to bottom in, in a long time. Uh, what's it like playing with this group? Well, and I agree with him 100%. This is this is a special group of receivers. We have speed, uh, some size. We have people that can play everywhere. Uh, we have pretty much everything you need to have a great receiving core. And uh, we spend a lot of time together. So I think we're uh, going to be pretty good this year. Who are some of those guys that you talk about? Uh, uh, Hamburg. You know, he's, he's he's kind of the speed guy. He's I guess the speed you guy. Say. Yes, sir. Uh, I I like to think of myself as can do it all. Quick, good hands, like you said. All of our guys pretty much have good hands. We have Jerry has some size, Blaine Holloway, Latavion. So. Are you looking forward then? If, if this is one of the best receiving cores top to bottom, it may be a big year for the receivers at West Virginia. That's what we're hoping for, yes, sir. And we're not afraid to block either. That's right. Well, That's that, the first thing as a receiver at West Monroe. You better block. <laughs> they teach them to do. That's right. Well, well Victor, I know your dad's here in the studio, but uh, I hear you live in a house divided. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> my mom has always been since a kid. Like, my mom went to Michigan State. She graduated from Your there. mother went to Michigan State. Yes, sir. My dad's always like Michigan. So, like, every time it's game day, she stays in the bedroom. Me and my dad just yelling and screaming in the living <laughs> He's room. He's a Buckeye fan. <laughs> <laughs> never, 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 never. And we just, we just go talk stuff back and forth, back and forth. Man. It's, it, that's the best day in the house all year. Well, I, I can only imagine. You know, Coach, I've, I've, I've heard a lot about ULM and, and Louisiana Tech and in-state rivalries and LSU, Alabama, but never Michigan, Michigan. Michigan not, State. not here. Not here in West Monroe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not here. Uh, so that that's kind of unique. Uh, uh, guys, what are you looking forward to, Michael, the most uh, this year, uh, your senior year at West Monroe High School? Uh, just being a leader on the field. You know, normally I'm one of the younger guys trying to listen, get information from the older guys, but this year I know I have to step up and help everybody else and uh, hopefully make it all the way. Kind of taking on a different role this year. Yes, sir, exactly. Well, the best of luck to you. And, and Victor, what are you looking forward to the most uh, this year, the 2018 season at West Monroe? Having the best offensive line ever. That's what I look forward to. Like, everyone said, everyone doubts us because oh, we, all our starters have graduated. We may not have the size, but I can tell you, we have the biggest heart. We have chemistry. We're together 24-7. During the summer, during summer workouts, we'll go out to eat almost every day at each other's house every other week. 
just it's a bond. Like that's the first thing I, I want to think of. It's a bond, and then we come on t together on the field and we just show up. That's well, what I look forward to. coach, I think that's a trademark uh, of a good offensive line. Right, they have to be together. You know, as an offensive line, and Coach Perot went. It, Coach me at Tech, he used to say you got to take five individuals and become one offensive line, and it takes time to do that. And the more time that they can spend together doing things, they can build that that bond that he was talking about. Well, guys, I certainly hope you build that bond, and I hope you build that path all the way to a district championship and uh, to the Louisiana Superdome. Yes, sir. Thank sure. you. All right, thanks for being uh, on the show. We're going to take a break and uh, be back with more Inside Rebel Football right after this timeout. When you're down for the count. Louisiana, do you want a great deal? Talk to Jim Taylor. He can make it real in a Chevy. This Chevrolet Silverado is made of high-strength steel, not aluminum. We start with a roll-formed steel pickup box floor that's stronger, lighter, and more durable than a traditional stamped steel bed. Nine cross members provide lateral support. Hydraulic body mounts enhance comfort while hauling, towing, and tackling rugged terrain. This technology is the newest revolution in tough. See it for yourself at Jim Taylor Chevrolet in Ravel. Lead the pack. Find new roads. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. It's time to switch over from offense to defense, and we've got the defensive coordinator. I call him T.O., but uh, everybody knows him as Tony Osborne in his 16th year. That's correct. At West Monroe High School. Coach, uh, welcome back to Inside Rebel Football and uh, looking for, I know, a great 2018 season. Appreciate it. We are, we are looking forward to a, a wonderful season this year, and we are thankful to be back and ready to go. Well, it started off on a, on a positive note. Uh, what an exciting game. Uh, against Neville High School in the Jamboree. It was. We uh, we wanted to keep all the fans in their seats. During you did the game. that. And, you did uh, that. You know, it's uh, you know, anytime you play uh, Neville, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, we uh, we want to play quality opponents in the Jamboree, and uh, they were definitely a quality opponent, and uh, it was a lot of fun Saturday night. Well, you know, anytime in a scrimmage or a Jamboree, you kind of will see what your team is like, what they're made of defensively, particularly for you. But did you think that the first four times that Neville had the football, it would be on uh, your side of the field? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was quite a task. That was. You know, uh, no, you don't really think about that. But, you know, Neville's going to expose your weaknesses. And uh, they knew uh, one of our weaknesses going into the Jamboree was going to be our offensive line. And they gave us, you know, and like Coach Hunt said, you know, we had great effort, and it was just one block here or there, and they were disrupting the offense that caused that. So, you know, it was a good test for us to go see at, go, go out there and, and see what we're made of and uh, how well we can handle being on our end of the field with our backs against the wall. And uh, didn't think it would be the first play of the game, but, uh, you know, I thought the kids handled it real well, and, uh, you know, we came out of it okay. Boy, did they ever. Those four possessions that I'm talking about in the first half that started – in Rebel territory, the Tigers came away with nothing, no points. Right. You know, that first first series, they returned the kickoff and uh, got down around the 22 and, and then tried a field goal and, and uh, missed the field goal. Uh, and then I believe they had two other times. They started around the 40 and one time maybe around the 35. And, uh, you know, we bowed our necks and, and uh, you know, the kids have been working real hard and, and just did a great job defensively. That's what you expect out of your defense is, is to get in there and grind and uh, not give up anything easy. And I was real proud of the kids. Oh, I, I bet you were. You know, I asked uh, Coach Hunt earlier in the show, you know, what was it like to look up after four years and not see Slade Bolden? Well, I, same thing for you. You, you don't see J.B. Gallette. Uh, that had to be something that, uh, you Correct. know, kind of – that's right. A little you know, difficult. It's, it's a new era without JB. You know, he, he uh, manned that linebacker position for the last four years and did an outstanding job for us. But, you know, we got new players in place. Just, you know, when, you know, un unfortunate and fortunate for us, you know, you get attached to kids and they play real well for you, but you know they're going on to a new chapter in their life eventually. And uh, as coaches, you know, you wish them well and you're proud of them. And 
and you're looking forward to you know starting over with uh, new kids and just building rebuilding your team with the kids that you got well and uh, talking about those kids uh, these kids have been on the team for obviously a couple of years but introduce the young man that you brought with you tonight well I got two seniors with me 34 Colton Harvey has uh, started the last two years at uh, primarily weak safety but he plays some strong safety too and uh, he's done an outstanding job for us uh, he's really grown up from last year uh, he you know when I watch him on film he's become a complete player and that's you know his cover skills are better his tackling skills are better his knowledge of where to line up and what to do is a lot better and, and uh, real proud of the effort and, and uh, technique and things that he brings to our team and then I got 38 Zach Martin who's also a senior uh, Mark, uh, Zach had a chance to start when he was a sophomore for us. He had been playing that well. And on the game that he was supposed to start was the game that he injured his shoulder. And uh, so he had so shoulder surgery that year. And then I, I believe he came back that summer before his junior year and he had shoulder surgery again on the other arm. And so it kind of, kind of sidelined him most of last year. He came back, but he wasn't 100%. And it was hard for him to get in the mix because of that. But okay. he's worked real hard to get his strength back. And uh, he's done an outstanding job. He's kind of like, in my mind, I mean, he could be a starter probably at all three positions. And uh, we're so talented back there this year that he's kind of that sixth man in, in basketball in my mind. Yeah. You know, where uh, I plan on rotating him uh, every other series to give kids a rest and, uh, and get him a lot of reps just like he was a starter. Yeah, that six man might not start in basketball, but sometimes he plays more than the starters. That's correct. Uh, well, Zach, tell us uh, how, how is that shoulder, and what, what was it like overcoming that adversity the last couple of years? Um, the shoulder feels good. Uh, last couple of years, you know, you just had to had to grind it out. You know, uh, had from had to get uh, had to get from like getting in my bed and stuff. You know, get out there and do stuff because you know, every year, I mean, uh, every time. Can't even talk right well, now. you're fine. You're fine. I just, I mean, I know it's it had to be a difficult process, you know, one setback after yeah. the other, but uh, you feel good and feel healthy oh, yeah. this year. Oh, yeah, I feel way better. Way better, way better. Well, that's great. It's certainly great to, to have you back and to have you out there. Uh, uh, Colton, it's, go ahead. It's, it's certainly difficult, as most people know that have an injury. You know, you got a rehab and you got, you know, six, eight, ten weeks of grueling rehab you know, before the doctor releases you to do more rehab and build your strength back up and then to do that and then to turn around, you know, a few months later yeah. and, and injure the other shoulder and restart that process is just grueling. Well, it shows you a lot about his character, That's though, right. and the way that he stuck with it. Uh, Colton, I'm looking at your number, 34. Uh, is there something unique about that? Because I, I know your brother wears the same number. There is. Uh, my dad was actually number 34 back when he played football at West Monroe. He played tailback and uh, linebacker, and I think he played receiver too. And uh, he got 34 from Walter Payton back really? in the 80s from uh, Chicago Bears. Did tailback. not realize that, but I do remember your father, and he was a he was a pretty good player. I don't know if he's told you that or not. I'm, yeah. But he was uh, <laughs> he he was pretty good. Uh, now I hear you're a big big Saints fan. Who, who's your favorite player on the Saints? Uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore, uh, is that the corner? Corner. I like Kenny Vaccaro too, but well, I like both of them. I well, you know, I'm, I'm shocked, Tito. Most good. people, when you ask who's their favorite player on the Saints, you know, they would say Drew Brees. But uh, true to the secondary guy, he's going to pick out a couple of secondary men. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when you play a position, you know, you look for that, that role model to, uh, to look at and watch and emulate. Uh, guys, what was it like? Uh, Zach, what was it like finally getting back on the field and playing at ULM the other night? Uh, ain't nothing like it, you know. The Crowds always, you know, hooping and hollering, and uh, you know, just get back out there after my, you know, shoulder surgeries, hoping to have, you know, a full year and not any injuries. So I mean, I'm just really excited for it. I know you are, and you've got uh, John Errett uh, or John Arrett coming in uh, Friday night, and you you played those guys last year. They're going to pose the test for you too. I know. Oh, yeah. how, how good are they? Uh, they they got a lot of speed. You know, probably the biggest team I've ever seen. I've ever lined up against, but. Yeah, just big speed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Colton, what's the difference between they say you play a little weak on the weak side, strong side? What's the difference between the two positions? Uh, there's not really a difference. Not really they're much pretty difference pretty at pretty all. The difference the same. It's just strong. I just slump to the strong side, weak, just weak side. Going where the so tight end is if you're on the strong side. Or? 
where the receivers line up. Most of the receivers? Yes, sir. I got you. Uh, Coach Osmond told me that this might be the most physical group of uh, secondary that uh, guys that he's had a long time. What, what makes you guys have that physical mentality, uh, Cole? Uh, last year, uh, losing get Zachary uh, kind of gives us revenge, you know. Want us to get a comeback and make it to the Dome this year. Kind of sticks in your mind and it makes you work that much harder. And, and Coach, that's what you like to see in a couple of seniors and, and guys that are going to be uh, uh, leading the, the way this we year. We do. You know, when we go to practice, uh, very seldom do I ever have to get on to them about the effort that they're giving me in practice. Now, I may have to get on to them about their technique or, or something else, but the effort is there. Uh, they're, they're really trying to improve themselves as tacklers, as cover guys, try to be you know, the, the best possible player at the position that they're playing. They're learning multiple positions. And, and to go with what Colton you know, didn't say was the difference between strong and weak is that weak safety you know, we do a lot of different things with. We may walk him up and bring him to an e a defensive end position to secure the edge. We may put him in the linebacker position. Or you may rush him like you did the other night. We may rush him. And, uh, but he's still got to have the cover skills if he's got a wide receiver on his side. So that's – and the strong safety, we haven't done that with yet. I got you. Well, I know you feel good about having these two seniors with you this year. I do. I feel real lucky to have both of them. Well, guys, uh, thanks for being on the show, and uh, we wish you the best in that, uh, in, in that uh, plan to get back to the Louisiana Superdome. Thanks for being on the show. We're going to take another break and be back with more Inside Rebel Football in just a moment. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for later. Right now at the Home Improvement Outlet, get all new GE appliances packed with refrigerator, freezers, oven, microwave, in stainless or in black or white. The Home Improvement Outlet is your GE showcase dealer. Get 12 months interest-free financing or the no credit check option is available. We also carry major name brands like Frigidaire and Samsung. The Home Improvement Outlet can improve your home for less. The Home Improvement Outlet keeps you building for less. Your baby is precious. When she's sick, you want the best health care you can get for her. Bring her to Samson Family Medicine. Our medical professionals really care about your child and do a lot more than just help make them well. We offer immunizations and physicals. We treat premature newborns, ADD and ADHD. We do EKGs, lab work and x-rays, all in-house and a lot more. But it's our people that make the difference. Open seven days a week. Samson Family Medicine, 2309 Arkansas Road, West Monroe. Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football. Jim Norris uh, joined by Glenn Hunt, offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator Tony Osmond. It's time to look at the highlights of West Monroe's uh, victory over Neville 76 in the Jamboree. We're going to take uh, – Glenn Hunt's going to take center stage first. That's right. Not Offense. many of them. We didn't have many of them, but we'll take a look at <laughs> well, them. Well, we had the one drive that we needed. In That's, the right. That's right. That's right. Uh, this first play is the uh, third down play in our, of our second drive, and uh, this is common uh, – uh, Garrett to uh, Hamburg for a 20-yard uh, pass. It's a great throw, great protection up front. They're bluffing the blitz, but good job, a good pocket right there for Garrett to be able to step up and uh, throw the football to Hamburg. And Hamburg's in the slot up top. He's just running a deep slant. We call it a pole route. And uh, Why a pole route? Well, we got a slant and then a post, and this is in between those two. So he's got to read the it, defender to see which we, one. We call it. We, we don't want our receivers okay. reading it because we want everybody on the same page. I so we've you. come up with a, a pole route. It's just a deeper slant or a shorter post. I got you. And, of course, but for that uh, big conversion on third down, uh, right. you're punting the football. That's right. And this is the next play. This is the inside zone. 45-yard uh, touchdown. <laughs> It's just a great job up front by our offensive line. Doesn't get any better than that. Right. I wish we had the end zone shot of it uh, because, I mean, the hole just opens wide up. We do a little window dressing with some motion to, you know, just to mess with their eyes a little bit, slow them down just a little bit, and then it opens up right there. Wow. Wow, that you looked easy. ran through that. Nah, one. I don't know. I could have gotten to the hole, but I don't <laughs> know if I could have ran through it. <laughs> this is Carson in at quarterback. This is Cam on the uh, – on the power read, this is a 21-yard gain. This is a great block by Caden Pierce. This is they call a holding penalty on this play. It's a terrible I call. I didn't see it. It's a terrible I call. I did not see it. I was just mentioning that I thought it was a great block by Caden, and then I saw the flag. Right. But you see the good double team right there by T.J. Bush and Blake Everett. 
I mean, it's 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 a one of the worst holding calls ever. Well, it's sometimes terrible. you can block too well. I mean, you you'll right. see him right here. Now he has his hand on his on his shoulder, but he is not grabbing. He's not pulling him. He's not preventing him. He's just pushing, and you can see it. But a good job outside blocking out here uh, by by Jerry Day at the bottom. He does a great job. But a good read right here by Carson. Yeah. When the guy head slaps Caden. He just didn't like being blocked. Right. <laughs> This is the inside zone right here. This is a cam. Oh, no. That's Trey Long. That's not a highlight. That's not Trey. No. He just, uh, he, he missed he does it. The highlights. I'm talking about Trey Long does yeah, the highlight. Yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just kidding with you. That was Coleman. It was supposed to be uh, cam on the inside zone. This was just a little play action. They did a good job of covering it up. And really not a bad job by common not to throw it. An in, yeah. interception. So, That's what I told him. Good job of eating that. So I don't know what we have here. Well, let's watch it and okay. see. By the way, Cam played well the other night. Yes, he did. He? And Caden played great, too. I thought he, he did. He really did. Uh, this is the zone trap. Um, you know, the disappointing thing is we had four penalties the other night. We had an unsportsman, or a, a, yeah, unsportsmanlike on uh, Cam. We had the two holding penalties and the offsides by, by Vic. Um, but, you know, we got to clean those up. This is a great job right here. Uh, you can watch Caden. This is not the zone read. It's the inside zone, but we're trapping. It's an automatic handoff. And offensive line does a great job. And Caden's number one. He's right uh, behind or right, right between right, the guard and the tackle. tackle huh? Right up there up top, yeah. And he's just trapping the defensive end so he can't fall back inside uh, on Cam. And Cam's looking for a cutback. Good job of breaking the tackle there. That was a 10-yard run right there for Cam. I don't know how many yards he ended up with. He didn't have a whole lot of carries, but, you know, had a good night. Again, this is the same play. Picked up about six yards right there. Had we, and you see Vic, that was after his uh, offside, so he was a little upset, <laughs> and he drives the guy. And we just got to be able – we got to be more disciplined and, and, and not get that uh, five-yard penalty because we ended up punting on fourth and four. Oh, and that's what I was so disappointed with. Uh, this is the kickoff return uh, to start the second half by Caden, Caden Pierce. Uh, we, we had planned for this because they did this to us last year, and we put a guy with good hands there, and uh, he finds a little seam, a great job right there by uh, Charlie, J.D., and Murphy uh, with blocks there. You know, one thing uh, receivers like to do, returners, they try to take it all the way across the field, and I mentioned that I thought it was a great job by Caden to finally that's, cut that's, it straight he, up. He found him a little seam. And uh, we're starting to get the ball to him more in practice. We're running him at the, you know, kind of backing up Cam and Charlie. Uh, it's just, it's a different change of pace, not the fast, but a more uh, physical runner. Oh, he's a big athletic and, guy. And, and, and he's also running some quarterback now. So uh, he's a kid that we got to get the ball in his hand somehow, some way. Good look forward to that. Uh, by the way, I think Wright had about 80 yards. Though, okay. Right? All right, well, let's switch over to defense. Uh, a lot of people thought the defense looked in midseason form. Well, I don't know that we're in midseason form, but uh, we we did play extremely hard, and uh, we we still made our mistakes. Uh, but you know, they both, like I said, they bowed their necks, and they uh, they didn't give up a whole lot when when we counted on them. You're right about that. Well, take us through those highlights, coach. I got what to call big plays and keys of the game today, um, and there's a lot of them, especially in the first half. But this is second down after the big kickoff return down around the 22, 23 yard line, and uh, big play. Uh, on, by by Brooks. Uh, let, me, let me watch the play. <laughs> yeah, Brooks Miller. It looked like the receiver in the flat when he caught it had a chance to pick up uh, some good yardage. And well, I, I think Trey Trey missed the first play. So anyway, this is Brooks. This is this is going to be Brooks on third down to make the big play. So he missed the first play of, uh, that I had on highlights. But that's Brooks on third down to force. Uh, the next play. I'm sorry, on second down to force third down. Okay. It's this good is, to have Brooks back. That's though. right. And uh, so that was second and six or seven, and Brooks makes that play. Now it's third and, and medium. And then uh, Andrew's going to force a force a big play right here. He almost he almost gets blocked, and and he really fights his fights his way to get out there and get a hold of that kid's shoulder pad. But watch him right here. He's at the defensive end spot here at the bottom of the screen. 
Yeah, in fact, I thought uh, w while we were watching the play unfold that he had gotten outside of Andrew, and I said, this well, is going to be too. a big play. From the, the sideline, I thought he got outside, too. He's he jumps down point. inside, and I don't think that's what he was supposed to do. And, uh, but but tell he, you what, he, he recovered. He recovered, and uh, you know that brings up fourth down now. So here's the field goal, the actual field goal for fourth down on that stop. I wanted to watch this again because I wasn't sure it came who from blocked the, it. Well, it came, came from the middle of the – the defense, I'm not sure who blocked it. Uh, it was a low kick in uh, Mal Malcolm. The Dalvin, Dalvin Hutchins. Dalvin Hutchins. Number 99. We, we saw he and uh, Gleason right there. We didn't know which one of them had gotten it. And, and we unfortunately fell on the ball at the one. We should have just left it. And, you know, we would have got it at the line of scrimmage. But if they kicked that field goal, we lose the game. That's correct. Make it. That's correct. But what? We might have scored. We might have scored. Yeah, we we want to turn it up. This is the more. second series, and uh, it's second down uh, after Neville forced our offense to punt the ball from the about the one or the two. Wow, that's and, a, uh, yeah, that's Tanner. This is going to be Tanner. That's Tanner Zordon. We're uh, in a defense with one linebacker right Good. here, and he's going to right. find the seam, and he's going to what I call wop. He's going to wop this guy. <laughs> and, uh, I have to remember that. <clears throat> A wop. We had a few of them, but you can watch him right there in the middle of the field. He's going to find the holes. He's patient, stays back, and then he, you know, he gets leverage, and, and it's a one-yard gain right there. So it brings up third and long, and uh, they're going to try to run a bootleg pass. Did you it's going to be Andrew? a good job by Chandler. You know, just Chandler holds the edge and, and kind of feathers that quarterback where he can't run. And then it's defended by Brooks Miller. Uh, Brooks is the safety on the top of the screen. Watch Gleason hit his man from the left defensive end. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can you can watch a lot of these guys wow. up front. They're uh, they're battling. That's a good job right there, timing that up and uh, breaking the pass up, which brings up the next play, which is fourth down, and they go for it. It's a good pass rush right there. The quarterback steps up and Chandler gets a hand on it, and I believe it's Andrew Gleason that uh, recovers it right there. But a good pass rush right there. You can watch. Quarterback tries to step up, and a lot of times, you know, there's seams, but our, our defensive front kind of collapsed and closed those seams. And Moncrief got his left hand in there yep. on the ball. Mm -hmm. He's the, he's the. He played a big game. Yes. He did. He played very well for us. A lot of kids did. This is the next series on second and six, and uh, they're going to try to run what we call a read power sweep. And it's going to be Chandler Moncrief again. He's uh, he's actually should have taken the running back, but he sees that he didn't get the ball, <laughs> and he takes the quarterback for a big loss right there. And then we uh, that brought up third and long, and we held him uh, on the next uh, play, and and uh, they threw an incomplete pass, and that would bring up first down in the next series. So we did a really good job right here. You know, again, our back's up against the wall. We didn't give them anything. They punted it, and uh, now they get it back in the next series. It's first and ten. They're going to try to run the ball inside. And Dalvin gets there first. He whips his man. And then Colton Harvey is coming from the safety position on the uh, top of the screen. He gets in there. And then the rest of the front. You, you can see that everybody's trying to get a piece of him before he goes down. But you can see Colton walking up on the top of the screen. Dalvin right there. And, and uh, then the defense collapses, closes it in. Second and 19 after after those that first down play, they get a couple of penalties. Uh, I can't remember if it was offsides. One of them might have been delay a game. And uh, we get good pressure up front, and then we sack him for a two-yard loss by Andrew Gleason. And uh, Colton Harvey and Dalvin, I think, gets in there late. Yeah, he just had nowhere to go. You, no. you had the edges kind of uh, pressure off the edges, and, and, but uh, the guys you know, in the middle were there too. That's right. You don't want to leave big seams, so you got to push your guy down so there's not a big seam, and they did a really good job there. This is going to be third and 22, and they're going to try to throw a tunnel screen. and It's going to get batted down by uh, – Dalvin, I mean not Dalvin, Chandler, and uh, if you'll Chandler Moncrief, and if you'll watch the secondary, the secondary read it perfect. So had they thrown it and completed it, it uh, it, it might have been was yeah, it might have been for a loss right wow. there because he's right there on it. That's Williams. So, that's Brad Williams. It's gonna bring up first and ten on the next series, 
still in the first half, and this is going to be a big play by Colton Harvey. We walked him into the linebacker spot to the right there, and he's going to see the seam, and he's going to whop the guy. Wow. And then he's going to get a little help out of Malcolm and Dalvin. Of course, he's getting a lot of help out of that front because they're eating up all the blocks. All he's got to do is find the ball, which he does a great job of. And right deliver here. a blow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he will uses, strike you. He uses great leverage right here, wraps him up, and runs his feet just like you, you want him to. It's going to bring up second and four on the next series. And uh, they're inside the 20. We get good pressure by Ethan Swanner right here. And a good coverage by Noby Harris. Forces a big third down coming up. Well, how's Ethan looking with all that weight loss? He looks great. Really he's uh, he's moving really good, and uh, he's he's doing a good job for us. We're very proud of him. Very pleased with him. Good pressure right there. Throw the incomplete pass. You can see the coverage was good everywhere. That brings up uh, third and four, and Tanner almost gets him down in the backfield, but then he. He slows down, slows him down enough for the rest of the defense to get there. You got Dalvin and uh, Sullivan, Malcolm, and then the rest of the defense in there. But this is third and four. Another big play, force a fourth down. Great job by the whole defense. On fourth down, you know they tried a slant route. Colton Harvey had it covered, and uh, it was incomplete. And so we go to the next series. This is second and eight. They're going to try to throw a bomb, and this is going to be a great. They brought in a new quarterback, the Brister kid, and this is Zach Knox on the pass breakup right there, and uh, strips the ball right out. He's got him covered, but you know sometimes you can still have him covered. But when the With ball hits his hands, pass, you know. perfect pass, and he did a great job of stripping it out. Boy, did he ever! Zach Knox, senior cornerback Zach, for you. Senior cornerback. They brought in uh, the the uh, backup quarterback here. He played a few few snaps, and then the uh, they eventually bring in starting quarterback back. They, uh, they bring the starting quarterback. Yeah, this is the uh, two-point conversion after they, they score on us. And it's a great job by the whole defensive front. Andrew, Ethan, Luke Bell in on the stop. You know, the Rebels, they, uh, they had a onside kick they, they got on us, and then uh, they went four plays, and we stopped them, and the uh, Rebels win. Seven six. Surprised by the two point conversion attempt? No, no, not at all. Figured it was coming, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, well, just like two years ago. After, yeah. I think after the field goal uh, attempt uh, early in the game, uh, I, fig I, I figured if they were going to do anything, it'd be two. We all did two point, two -point conversion. conversion. Yeah. Well, you guys uh, played it well. Uh, great, uh, great effort. That's one thing that both of you have indicated. I think the kids played with great effort the other night. We Absolutely, did. we did. And uh, I think that bodes well uh, for the future. Uh, guys, thanks for showing us the half, uh, the highlights for the Jamboree. And we've got a lot more to come here on Inside Rebel Football. Stay with us. The Graduate Shop has been serving Northeast Louisiana schools for over 50 years. We provide the highest quality class rings, letter jackets, graduation announcements and accessories, as well as caps and gowns. The Graduate Shop enjoys celebrating special recognitions with our schools, especially when they win a state championship ring. We strive to provide the best service to our schools and families as they capture these special memories. The Graduate Shop, serving our community with quality graduation products. Hey, Louisiana, do you want a great deal? Talk to Jim Taylor. He can make it real in a Chevy. At Jim Taylor Chevrolet, the Chevy Silverado is the right tool for the job to get tools to the job, big or small. With plenty of cargo room, extended cab, towing capacity of 13,000 to 14,500 pounds, available easy lift and lower tailgate, and a six liter V8 engine. You won't work harder, you'll work smarter. See your success with Jim Taylor Chevrolet in Ravel. Build something unique. Find new roads. Kilpatrick's provides guidance to create meaningful ceremonies to honor the life of your loved one. You'll receive exactly what you selected. Others may offer you one thing and provide another. Your family's interest is our first priority. We offer individualized services to fit any need. Kilpatrick's provides service, facilities, and prices second to none. Kilpatrick Serenity Gardens offers many beautiful settings. Choose wisely. Choose Kilpatrick's.
Welcome back to Inside Rebel Football as we get ready to wind things up. Uh, joined by head coach Jerry Arledge again, Jim Norris with you. And, uh, Coach, we talked in the opening segment uh, about a little bit about the Bayou Gym and you had more starters returning on defense, and so you would expect them to be a little bit ahead of the offense right now because the offense lost so many starters along that line. But you had to be impressed with the way the defense played, uh, particularly in the first half, but, but all game long. The entire game, you know, we uh... – Word a little bit about about Andrew Gleason coming off the knee surgery, and uh, and the shoulder he, too. Well, yeah, but that was pretty much healed up <laughs> at the end of last season. Uh, but he he worked extremely hard to, to rehab, but he was still you know when you have an injury of that of that type, the ACL, he was wearing a brace I, all I've through practice, it. and and then you, you leery you know, but you get out, and I was concerned I wasn't gonna. I had no intentions of playing him that much. But after about four or five plays, it just, I mean, that adrenaline took over, and he didn't think about that knee anymore. <laughs> and you you said, must well, have forgot time. about it, too. I huh? did, too. Let her go. <laughs> let it go. Well, did he ever let it go? And he had a, a really a comeback game uh, when, when you think about uh, where kids have to come these days after an ACL. Well, all up and down the line. In line I mean, uh, we, we felt really good about about the front guys. Ethan Swarner's lost about uh, probably 25, 20, 25, maybe even 30 pounds from the spring to now, and he's so much quicker. And uh, you ask him why, why? We ask him, what did he why, say? Why did you lose so much? Why did you want to lose that weight? So I wouldn't have to play offensive line. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they were talking about moving him yeah. over. Well, we, we said that in the spring, and he even worked him there for a week in the spring, but uh, yeah, he's too, he valuable, you too valuable of a defensive player. And then being a big Dalvin's lost about 20, 25 pounds, and he's a he has a much more endurance, and he's much quicker. And of course, Malcolm Moore is uh, is the junior among that bunch. Malcolm started last year, played some as a true freshman. He did, and uh, he's up to about 240, and is really, really a good football player. Uh, so I tell I know you, you I, good I, about I that tell month. him. I tell him all the time, you won't ever be as good as your daddy was. <laughs> and uh, daddy was a quite a football player. Did you coach his dad? I coached his dad at, at Tech. Well, then you certainly would know. And you had a couple of backups along those lines that, that have surprised you. Surprised well, you. Sullivan, uh, just uh, keep wanting him. Hey, well, you, you're going to be a player this year. Well, <laughs> he's a senior, and he's decided he's going to be a player. And uh, he played some quality minutes the other night. We put him in in a short yardage goal line situation. I remember and, that. And really did a good job for us, really did. And, and of course, uh, maybe the biggest, I don't know if it's a surprise or not, but secondary-wise, we're, we're a pretty savvy group. Uh, uh, not a lot of youngsters there, uh, primarily juniors and seniors, and, and we can be a really good secondary, probably as good as we've been in a long time. And the, the defense just seems to be, even the secondary, really, really physical. Well, one thing, uh, maybe I don't. Maybe we didn't save up for the second half, knowing that the jamboree is two 12-minute quarters or halves, but it's a, it's equivalent of a half a football game. So maybe they uh, they didn't try to save up <laughs> for the second half. <laughs> Will we see uh, Carson Jones a little bit in the secondary, or is he going to focus uh, on quarterback? Well, I think Carson uh, moved back primarily to defense uh, oh, this week. I did. Uh, well, we, we had a kid move. Uh, folks moved to Mississippi, and, uh, and so we were a little thin at cornerback. He'll come back and, and work some at corner and at safety. He's only started in the secondary as a sophomore and a junior back at safety, so uh, yeah. it made sense uh, if we one man shy to bring him back. And that's really our intentions all the time, knowing that he can still be a backup quarterback in, a, in an emergency situation. And... Uh, of course, uh, Caden Pierce is also working at quarterback and H-back and fullback and, and a lot of other backs and, uh, <laughs> and would be a, a, a good good quarterback also. So uh, all those things, we uh, thought we would get him back on defense and uh, he'll do a great job. Well, you had Tanner Zordon coming back, uh, but that other youngster at uh, linebacker showed out for you. Chandler uh, Moncrief, uh, yes, he uh, moved in the spring came to us and wanted to play linebacker and uh, it didn't take us long to realize that he's got some pretty good skills and he's and he's a very good linebacker but you know we're able to take advantage of of the fact that he has played with his hand on the ground we we walk him up down on on the front a lot and 
and uh, bring him off the edge, and uh, he's pretty good at doing that too. Boy, he's pretty good at doing that. He's pretty yeah. good at doing just about anything. Yeah. Uh, well, talk to us a little bit about uh, practice this week and, and maybe the, the injury situation coming out uh, of the Jamboree, Coach. Well, we really uh, are pretty healthy. Now, today, uh, well, today, of course, is Wednesday, and uh, yesterday was really, uh, really a tough uh, practice, maybe one of the toughest we've had in a long time. Uh, most physical, maybe. Um, today we eased up being Thursday, uh, excuse me, Wednesday. We were out there an hour and 15 minutes, but, uh, you know, you wonder how, how should you, <laughs> it's always a question, how should I handle this since we played Saturday and the kids really didn't have much of a day off because we come in on That's Sunday right. afternoons. And But Monday we didn't do anything other than scout report and uh, just kind of a walk through. But the kids got 48 hours to, to get back and get ready for Friday night, and that's uh, that's what we got to do. By the way, did you ever check on Andrew and see how he was doing after the game? You said you were worried about him, and you forgot about it during the game. So I just wonder if you checked on him after the game. I guess he's doing fine. He was doing fine, <laughs> yeah, and, and all the others were too. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's amazing that uh, adrenaline is a powerful, powerful <laughs> drug, stimulant, hormone, right. whatever, right. it whatever it is. Whatever it is. It does. It does. It does things feed the body. It really does. Uh, John Errett uh, coming in uh, Friday night, Rebel Stadium, and uh, those guys gave you a heck of a game last year, and most everybody anticipates uh, a similar contest this time around. They're very talented. They really are. We're not just saying that. Big offensive linemen and uh, offensive tackles really block well. They're probably a 50-50 throwing and, uh, and running the ball. Uh, good running back quarterback I, I think is a four-year starter and uh, he runs the ball exceptionally well and throws the ball well they catch the ball well good receivers yes. and they're probably better on defense than they're on offense <laughs> yes so, so is there anything they don't do well no uh, they do it they do it all well, well you know they got, got, got an lsu uh, commitment at linebacker they've got a defensive end uh, in addition to him it's a very good very good football player what we really need to do is is play ball control be good in special teams, be really good in special teams, and we've hit them hard. We've worked on mistakes that we made last week. We will work on those special teams again tomorrow and uh, because they are so important. Yeah, just limit the amount of times that offense for John Eric can touch the football. That's right. We need to be satisfied with a three- and four-yard game and keep those chains moving. And, and that keep, clock, keep that clock and rolling. keep them off the field. Keep their offense <laughs> off the field. That's and, Win that special teams battle, and uh, the Rebels uh, should come out with a with a W. Well, it's, it usually plays a big part in most football games. It did the other night? It did the other night. I point that out to the kids every day. Every, <laughs> every day. Every day you work on special teams, yes. you remind them. Yes. Well, I think that's a good reminder. Coach, well, I'm looking forward to a, a great 2018 season. It's great to be back, and it's great to have you back on the show. Well, it's great to have you back on the show. It's good to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, for Head Coach Jerry Arledge, I'm Jim Norris, and that'll do it for Inside Rebel Football Week 1.